Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about what makes them tick, the nature of adolescent women. There are some things that you, you should be aware of, okay, and, ha and how they might affect your choral ensemble. Adolescent young women, peer approval is very high for most of you, okay? Not for all. There's always exceptions, okay? But the need to conform is very high for girls. They don't want to stand out. They don't want to draw attention to themselves, okay? If, if they're really particularly smart, you know, they're going to be called a brainiac or smarty pants or whatever, okay? If they're really athletic, you know, there's all sorts of different stereotypes for girls. They don't want those. They want to be the same as everyone else. Virtually nothing has been written on the female voice change. Okay, Lynn Gackle, Dr. Lynn Gackle at the University of South Florida, has really been the pioneer in the research of the female voice change, but there's still so much that needs to be learned and discovered. Okay? In her process of her research, she guessed that women go through four stages, or what she calls phases, because they're more gradual. Not all women's choir music has to be about flowers and butterflies, though. Okay? There's lots of excellent music out there written about you know, women's suffrage, um, you know, and, and the experiences that women face. And there's, again, some resources of, of music publishers that specialize in that type of music. How to relate. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> if I knew how to relate to women, I'd be up there with Dr. Phil, okay, making all his money that he makes, okay? But here's what I can tell you, is that it all starts with your environment that you establish for your women's choir. Creating the right environment <clears throat> is one that is safe for them, one that is supportive, one that doesn't allow bullying. We talked about that. Okay? And one that you can allow girls to make mistakes and not feel shame. 